So we're getting ready for our first big trip of the year. And I just happened to be watching, actually, the Fate Unbound couple. I was watching their video on some of their, like, uh, best and worst purchases. Just, you know, killing time at the end of the day after being tired. And uh, something I wasn't even thinking about, but it always been a problem, was that when you go to use the shower, and I'm not going to do the dramatic reenactment videos, but I think everybody that's showered in an RV knows that when you're trying to conserve water, and you turn the shower head from on to off, and, you know, lather up or whatever, and then turn it back on, at least in every camper I've ever been in, uh, you get the blast of cold water. The cold blast, as they call it. Um, and they actually have a solution for that. And I hate it, my wife hates it, so why in the world have I waited so long to fix this? I don't have a good answer for it. But the answer here is the backflow preventer. I'm sure there's a couple different ones. Camco, of course, anybody that's in the RV um, world knows about these guys. So... I'm going to install this onto the hot water line because what's happening there is uh, the cold water pressure. And again, there's, you know, YouTube University, lots of videos on this. Uh, the cold water is at a higher pressure than the hot water in most campers. Uh, in mine, it's that case, whether I'm on uh, shore water or, or city water or running off the pump. And so what happens is you turn that shower head off, the cold pressure is being forced down into the hot system so it's forcing 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 and you end up with cold in the hot water line and so that's why until that clears itself out you get that nice cold blast so if you put a backflow preventer on it's going to prevent that cold water from being forced into the hot system these instructions are going to be very specific to each camper each camper is a little different in terms of how they've run the water what kind of issues you're going to run into for example uh, the Fate Unbound couple, they had to put a 90 degree bend into theirs and then use a shark bite adapter and all kinds of stuff because they were in a really cramped space. But on our grand design here, uh, basically four screws, you know, this is right where your handles are at. Four screws hold it in, a little bit of silicone caulk, and then some people might think, man, that's on there a little tight. And the reason for that is there's two-sided tape on the top and the bottom that they just use as temp set tape on here it's it's not a ceiling tape it's not like a butyl adhesive it's just straight up 3m two-sided tape to help get this in place um while they apply this i assume while they apply the silicone so it all it appears that i have enough uh you know what we would call l direction um to install the adapter and then reinstall this so that's what i'm gonna work on i'm gonna get this unscrewed gonna use plenty of teflon tape around that new adapter get it installed, not seal this up, but then pressurize my system, make sure I don't have any leaks. I'll get a video up of that as well. Now I will fully admit that this borders on the level of obsessive, but I am going to actually, on the outside shower, this is the back side of it, I've removed the panel and crawled through here, I'm actually going to add one onto the outside shower hot water line as well, because we use that a lot when we're camping. Uh, and also don't appreciate the cold blast. So I'm actually putting two of these on. So I always like to share, you know, and make sure people understand that I never get a project perfect the first time or rarely. So the first time I did this and pressurized the system, I had an incredibly slow leak. I mean, you could just see the tiniest little drop creeping through there. And of course, any leak is no good. So I ended up unscrewing the whole thing and putting on about three times the amount of Teflon tape that uh, I would have normally put on or thought about, but to make sure that I've got a real good seal. And then I've left this system pressurized and used it several times over the past two hours, just trying to make sure that I am certain that there will be no leak on this side of it. Uh, as for whether or not it actually uh, will prevent the cold blast, I'll have to update on that in a couple days when we do the trip and actually have the system heated up. But again, I would put on a lot more Teflon tape than maybe you would normally think, or maybe you're almost people that's used to this and you put lots on. But uh, it was definitely a lot to get a good seal onto there. So I've gone on the week-long trip with my family now down to the beach. Uh, I stayed at a nice state park near the ocean. And uh, we've used the uh, shower a bunch of times since installing this upgrade. And I have to say that it very, is very effective. I would put it at about 90% effective. Um, you still have the line of shower as it goes into the, the uh, receptacle here. That as you switch this from on to off, 
there's still going to be a little bit of pressure exchange between the hot and the cold. Meaning when you flip this back to on, I feel a very slight temperature change, but nothing that uh, makes me want to scream out or jump like it used to, and it moves out very quickly. So even if you just do dry camping, I would highly recommend this because before I was wasting a little bit of water trying to rinse out the washcloth or something like that, but it felt like I was always trying to get the temperature back to what it was, but this definitely took care of 90% or better of the problem. So I would highly recommend it if you're struggling with the cold shower blasts coming out of your unit. Thanks for watching. Leave me some comments. Appreciate everybody's time.